Now it's time for Bible reading, and we're taking a reading from Psalm 119, verse 133 to 135. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man so will I keep thy precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of our message is Walking in the Scriptures. Amen. Now, the psalmist says in Psalm 119 and in verse 133, order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. It says that if you order his steps in the word of God, even in the holy scriptures that he should not let iniquity have dominion over him that is should not let ignorance have dominion over him should not allow imaginations to have dominion over him and that's why he says order my steps in thy word. Then in verse 133, also 134 says, Deliver me from the oppression of man. Say there is this oppressor. He is man. What man? The wicked man. So will I keep that precept. See, God wants us to know that there is one who is the oppressor. That God came to deliver us from the oppression of man. Which man? The natural man. The old man is the oppressor. Says that if you deliver me from the natural man, I will keep your word. I will walk in the new man. And then I will keep your statues as you said we should do that we are to walk in the scriptures the god of the bible ordered and planned for us that we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good work which god has ordained before the foundation of the world that we should walk in his word now he says that it is God that can do it. And so that's why the psalmist is praying and say, Oh Lord, order my steps Amen. in the word of God. Yeah. When you order my step, I will be walking in victory. I will be walking in success. I will be counting my blessings. Amen. I will see that I'm blessed. Mm. I'm blessed in Christ because Christ has everything. All the Father has is Christ. He is that inheritor, so I have inheritance. Secured in the heavens, I will laugh. I will see that you have truly blessed me. Oh, make me to work in your world. Amen. You see, why is the psalmist saying so? It's because of what he experienced. You know, the scripture is so true, it does not hide anything from us. Say this man that is calling on God to order his steps in the world, had this to say concerning himself in Psalm 73, verse 1 to 3. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh sleep. Say, I almost fell. I almost gone, get gone out of the way. 
For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So I took my gaze away from your word. I almost fell. I started envying the wicked one and his wickedness and prosperity. I was now walking in the wicked. Who is the wicked? The flesh. The flesh is an enemy of God. Says that the flesh cannot obey God. He is anti Christ. Christ is against him. He is against Christ. The psalmist says that when I took my gaze away from the good one in, unto the wicked one, I almost fell. I was envious at the prosperity of the wicked. So that is why he says, Honor my steps in the world. Let me not walk in a slippery place where I can slip and fall. Now, how did he get the cure? He said he returned to God. He went into the sanctuary. Now he understood that the wicked is in walking in a slippery place to stumble and fall. That if we walk in the flesh, we are walking in he alone that has made all humans to fall. He made Adam to fall in the garden because Adam left the world and he was walking in the wicked one, the ancient serpent. And so God is saying to us, he came so that we would, he would turn us to the truth. Then we'll be walking the truth. That the truth is the word of God in the Bible. He is living. That's what God ordained for us to do, to walk in the living. He said, if you walk in the living, you'll be alive. If you walk in the living, you will have nothing to do with the dead. You will be filled with joy, joy in the Holy Ghost. You will know that your portion is secured in God and God alone. Amen. I hear more in Psalm 7, 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, yes. and he delighted in his way. So the step of a good person is ordered by God. You know, God will not order you to your steps in failure. No, God will not order anyone's feet. He said, even when we are tempted, don't say God has tempted you, because God will not tempt any man with uh, evil that we are tempted when we are drawn away from God into our own lust, the lust of the flesh. And then we are enticed, and then when sin finished, there is death. He says that a good person, his feet, his steps are ordered by God. Please let God order your steps. How will he order our steps? He gave us a full steps we must follow. When Jesus came into the world, he was walking in the scriptures. And because he was walking in the scriptures, he overcame the devil, overcame everything, he overcame the grave, and because he walked in the world, said that's how to overcome. That whosoever believes in him will become an overcomer. That it is God that ordered. You know, when God ordered your step, you can stumble. Because it's not from man, from God himself. See, that's why God is calling us to come to this Lord, to his word. Because if we leave the scriptures, as we study in the Sunday school, that there is gospel. That is gospel is the gospel of the Bible so that we don't forget. That's why we keep repeating the word and preaching the word as God commanded. The reason is because so that each time we, if we are to forget, he will remember, he will remind us that no, brother, sister, you are walking the wrong place, walking the word. It is this word of God that God gave us victory by. Our victory is not in the flesh, it's in Christ. Amen. Say so we should stand in this liberty where we God has liberated us. So he set us free from every evil and failure through Christ. Where is Christ? In the Bible, his word. He said, the step of a good man is order. 
But you know, there are many today that are turning people away from this truth. It's not new. It happened in the old. That's why it is written for us in the Bible. If you look at Malachi chapter 2, in verse 7 and 8, the prophet was sent to speak to the priest, even to the preachers of those days. In verse 7, for the priest lives should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Amen. Is it a priest or a pastor or whoever is a minister of God is a messenger. You know, one that is sent on the message, he has a message to deliver. He says he's a messenger of the Lord. Who is the Lord? The Holy Scriptures, the Word of God. So everyone that is a pastor is meant to be a pastor of the Bible. That means he will preach the word because faith comes by hearing, hearing him preach. You believe when you preach the word of God, not just letters. We don't just quote the scriptures. We preach the scriptures Amen. as the living. Now he said they departed from preaching the word. Instead of people coming to them to get understanding of the word, that was not the case. In verse 8, but ye have departed out of the way, you have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, say as the Lord of hosts. You know, they were not like Malachi. They say, Malachi, is it only you that is walking in the way? Malachi will say, No, I'm a messenger. I'm delivering the word of God. Thus say the Lord, we have gone out of the way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Why is he not understood? He said, we are supposed to understand. The psalmist says, let not iniquity have dominion over me. We are to walk in the world. We walk in him. And when you walk in him, you have victory. So say the word of God. This is where he gave us victory. Not in the flesh. In the word of God. So that those who walk in the word of God will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Say, but the error is exacerbated, is magnified by the preachers. He says the preachers are now his enemies. They have turned the people out of the way. All of them have stumbled. We should not stumble at this word of God. The word that God gave to us is in the Bible. He says, every one of us from the least to the greatest are to be taught how to work in the world. Now, see the amazing thing of the truth of the word of God. When he came here in the days of his flesh, in Matthew chapter 14. Now, Jesus was walking on the water to meet the disciples who were troubled in the sea. And it was night, so they could not see who exactly he was. They thought he was a demon or a spirit. They were afraid. But when he spoke to them, he says, I am the one. Then Peter answered to him in verse 28. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. I want you to look at this scenario. Peter is not seeing him. He's in the night. Now he's only following the word. He said, if he be you, bid me. Speak the word only. Bid me to come and walk on the water. In verse 29, and he said, and he said, come. That's all. He said, come. Oh, he's telling you, oh man or oh, woman. Jesus said, come. Come unto me, and all you that labor on a heavy lady, and I will give you rest. Amen. Who said, say, who said, come? The scriptures. Mm -hmm. When you open the Bible, you hear the voice saying, come. Come to me. Mm -hmm. It says that we search the scriptures, and then we think we have eternal life, we are, but they are dead that testify of me. And so he said to Peter, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. To go to Jesus. You see, when Peter responded to the word, scripture record for us that he was walking on the water. Amen. If you respond to the word today, you will walk on your waters. Yes, 
on every trouble that is troubling your hearts, what, what is discouraging you? Now listen to the word of God. He said, come, be of good courage. I am the Lord. He said, Peter was walking in the world. He said, because Peter was walking in the world, he was walking on the water. Amen. In verse 30, but when he saw the wind, Bustorius, see, he was seeing the world, he was walking on the water, but when he was not looking at the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Amen. You see, he said when he took his gaze from Jesus into himself, he find out that he is helpless, limited, doesn't matter who you, the person is. He said, when we are on our own, we are on our own. That with many things, he said, with man, these things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So there are things that are impossible unto us. And that's why God gave us Jesus Christ. He gave us his word so that when you walk in the word, all things become possible unto you. Amen. What you couldn't do before, you begin to do it. It will begin to happen in your life. Amen. Miracles will be taking place. Understanding will be flowing. It says that when Peter took his gaze from Jesus Christ, don't forget he's not seeing him. He took his mind away from the word. When the word was controlling him, he was walking on the water. And when he now began to look at the wind, as the psalmist says, I was envious when I took my gaze away from God. And then I almost fell. But the good news here is that he did, as the psalmist said, order my step in your word. He said, oh, Lord, save me. Are you sinking? Are you drowning? There is hope for you. Amen. Since you know him, maybe you were walking before. You are not walking well anymore. Return to him. Cry to the Lord in that circumstance. He is faithful in all circumstances. He said he cried to the Lord. And then... He saved him. He brought Peter out of his trouble. As he said, call upon me and I will answer you. He answered Peter, he will answer you. That God ordained us to walk in the scriptures, in the word of God, he is the system of God. That's how Jesus walked. He didn't walk in the flesh. This is why you hear, you hear that though he was in the world, he knew no sin. He was walking according to the word of God. God came to make us to walk in his word. Not just quoting scriptures. No, to know him. To know the scriptures. That God gave us the scripture as a being. As that one we should turn to and keep in our heart. That when you keep him in your heart, you will be growing. You will be growing the knowledge of him. You will, you will be walking strong in spirit in the inner man. And so that is what he came to show to us that we should not walk in the flesh. Those who walk in the flesh, they are condemned already. That's where the condemnation is. So there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. That is not imagination. Christ is real. Jesus Christ is living today. Where is he living? In the Bible. Where was he at one time? In the flesh, but he had died. Jesus is no longer in the flesh. He is not moving on this land of the living in the flesh anymore. As it is appointed unto men to die once, so also the Son of God died as a human. Now he that he lived, he is living in God. Which God, the word of God. He said, you also should reckon yourself to be dead indeed to the flesh and alive in God through Jesus Christ. Amen. And so God came so that we all will gain entrance to this amazing God. He said, when Peter turned to Jesus, cried unto Jesus, Jesus delivered him. He saved him. He will save you today. What is the challenge? Just call on him. He has saved many people and he will save you also. And so, Lord, deliver me from this problem that is I am I found myself. 
deliver me from this confusion that I find myself, he will, he will show you a way. He said with the same temptation, he will show you a way to escape. Amen. Jesus says, I am that way. Yes. I am that truth to escape. I am the alternative. See, there's a hope for you today. Jesus is that hope. He is that alternative. Is that way God ordained for us? He said, in him we live, we move, and have our being. Mm -hmm. God gave us the Bible as a system to live successfully in this world and become an overcomer. Amen. Says that when you walk in the world, everywhere you go, the Lord will preserve you. Every circumstance you go, you know, certain people have gone through many troubles, and how did they come out of the trouble in the Bible? According to the word. We have stories, plenty of stories in the Bible of how God saved people from fire, saved people from water, saved people from shipwreck, and then they survived according to the word of God. Even a man was swallowed up, even Jonah, by the fish, he survived. By the word of the Lord, you shall survive. Amen. Let Jesus enter you, enter him. Yes. Walk in him, you will not fulfill that failure of the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why we preach him, so that we will call on him. We're going to call on him. He says, how can they call on whom they have not believed? How can they believe on whom they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? But he sent us to preach him, to preach the Bible so that we can believe on him, we can pray in his name, and then the spirit of the book will answer us. Amen. So he said that it is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing. To serve the Lord, Now pray unto him, that light of God is the scripture. He said the entrance of it into you will give you light. Amen. You could walk in the revelation of God, he is the true God. Yes. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Almighty oh, Savior, Jesus. eternal spirit, you have come to show us where we are to walk. We are to walk in your word. When we walk in your word, God, we don't feed the lust of the flesh. When we walk in the world, we are an overcomer. 